everybody, it's Kale from the Apple Seeds Teaching Farm again, and uh, I wanted to talk to you today about um, one of the keys to success in your garden, and that is planning. So I take pride in my garden planning. It's a huge part of what I do. Um, I think it's 90% of what I do is planning. Um, all through the winter, throughout the spring, um, before I start putting any seeds in the ground, um, we're thinking about what we want to plant, where we want to plant it, plant things. Um, so I want to show you today our garden journal. So this is a garden journal I got. I picked this up in Oregon. I was visiting some friends um, and I thought it was super cute, kind of DIY homemade garden journals. I think some kids at the local elementary school were selling these for a fundraiser. Um, so it was, it was right before I started this job um, here at Apple Seeds, which the first date in our garden journal is 3 4 of 14 which would have been probably the fir my first day here um i think this is a picture of mary's daughter june i drew on during our first meeting our first staff meeting um but basically this journal shows everything that i've done in the garden um beginning with the very first uh garden plan in 2014 Cover means cover crop. There's bush beans, mixed flowers, the number of the beds, the indicate the this is north. Um, this is a very rough beginning of how I started this, and it's really you'll see that it's evolved over time and become much more clear. Um, if you get like to 2020, here's what our garden plan looks like now. Um, this is our spring garden plan. So we have the different rows. One, two, three, down to ten. Um, we have different varieties of crops in here, Adirondack and All Blue. These are a full bed of potatoes. You can see that they were planted on March 27th. Um, and onions went in on March 10th. Uh, this was 2019 kale that we overwintered. This is a batch of older kale. This is the newer kale here. We've transplanted it on March 23rd. Whenever I do this, I have the, the spring crop, and if I do summer plantings, I do I go over here to the left and draw the bed again uh, with and kind of start filling out the puzzle of, you know, what summer crops we're going to plant. So you can see we have the squash, zucchini, and okra over here. We've got some uh, cow peas later carrots and beets, sweet potatoes. We'll plant fall Irish potatoes on July 6th, and we're probably gonna dig our spring potatoes um, around the 4th of July. So we'll just follow up a new crop of fall potatoes with from after we harvest the spring potatoes, but we're planting them in a completely different part of the garden. Um, again, sweet potatoes are gonna go in here on May 21st, which is a day that's already passed. Our sweet potatoes are a little late shipping with COVID and everything, it's been a little bit difficult getting supplies, but they're on their way, they're ordered, they should ship on Monday. So I don't um, cover, I don't highlight the date in green until the crop goes in. That keeps me um, kind of in line with uh, the ideal planting dates, and then actually I can go in and adjust when these go in. And that's when I highlight, because it's in, it's planted, the dates are set in stone. We have our established berry patch up here, blueberries, raspberries and blackberries. You can see we have different varieties. We have six blue, uh, six uh, blue ray, seven duke, five gold raspberries, which the variety is called Anne, and then eight heritage, which is a red variety. We have five Natchez and eight Apache, and these are uh, blackberries that were established by the University of Arkansas. We have a bed of melons and pumpkins that is not, have not been established yet. Cantaloupe, watermelon, pie pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns. Those are probably going to go in in early June. Um, we have our sweet corn. Winter squash is not planted and popcorn is already in. And we're going to plant more varieties of sweet and popcorn in a different garden when we have some beds opened up. Um, Clemson spineless okra, jade green beans. Those both went in late April. And then again, our sweet potatoes are another batch of sweet potatoes are going to go in here late May. This is a big bed of tomatoes, and it's very complicated but um, and confusing. But we have cherry varieties, uh, slice big slicer varieties, and then paste tomatoes. Uh, we have a huge bed of cucurbits, which are zucchini and summer squash, and then we have a couple of 
areas for cucumbers. And then finally, the last bed, we have sweet peppers, basil, and eggplant. So I plant these together because uh, the sweet peppers, the basil, and the eggplant all need to be trellised in a similar fashion. And we're going to do a video um, in the future on trellising to kind of explain that. But the spacing is also the same on these plants. So you'll see that we use a weed barrier that's a permanent fabric that I reuse year after year that has um, holes measured out and burned into them and I just basically replant the same varieties of crops with that um, with that same piece of weed fabric year after year in a different part of the garden of course. Another great thing about this um, this garden journal is it's where I record all of the seeds that I start. And so we order the majority of our seeds from Johnny's Select Seeds. They're an awesome seed company in Maine. You can get garden supplies from them, all kinds of seeds. Um, I do order some of our summer crops from a company in Virginia called Seed Savers, uh, Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. Now, with COVID and everybody home and quarantine and gardening, seeds have become really kind of difficult to find. I think a lot of companies have sold out. Another cool seed company is Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. This is in, uh, Man I believe, is it Mansfield, Missouri? It's just, uh, and this is what kind of the Johnny's seed, cut, seed uh, packets look like. And where do you do, or how do you do your planning for what you're going to start in the greenhouse? Yeah, so that's what we're doing right here. The, um, basically, this right here is our um, seeding uh, plan. This is from 2020, so the 20 we do have some 2019, some later 2019 seeds that are started in an earlier part of the of the journal that we start seeds in the greenhouse and then plant them in the high tunnel in the middle of the winter, mostly lettuces and spinaches. We have a garden planning meeting in early January every year with the programming staff and myself, and they talk about when their programs are, what dates they need certain crops, and what varieties they would like. So I take that information again, right after New Year, and within the first two weeks of January, I've got a seed order made, and we've got a lot of seeds here. So um, you can see January 23rd, we started spinach, collard, Swiss chard, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, the first of our peppers even, and tomatoes. Um, but the good news is, is we can take these little seedlings, and once they're two or three months old, two months old, we can pot them up into larger three-inch pots, and then have, you know, six or eight-inch tall plants to put in the ground. Um, I do succession planting, so you'll see, I usually, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I was starting seeds about every other week, so January 23rd and then February 6th, um, February 20th, March 5th. So we, um, the good news with this stuff, it, with, with starting seeds like this, is um, if something doesn't germinate, if you happen to get a bad batch of seeds, you know, if it hasn't germinated in a couple weeks, you can just re-sow again. But just uh, the importance of having a clear system that you can replicate, that you can read, and also other people can read. This is, the system I have now is pretty simple. It's about as simple as I can get it, but it includes the information that's needed. The plant type, the, the, or the plant family, the plant variety, the date it was planted, and then the measurement of where it is in the field in, in terms of uh, the garden bed. So it's easily recognizable. If you have a quick primer on this, you could take my garden notebook and go out to the field and say, okay, here's the tomatoes, here are the squash, here's the old broccoli that's almost finished. Um, and do you do any sort of post-season reporting, analysis? How do you decide what you're going to plant next year? Uh, I look at the we did we also keep uh, harvesting a pretty robust harvest log and so we, we weigh everything and record everything that we weigh we harvest so we kind of see what varieties worked best um, if we've grown different varieties if we tried something out a lot of different heirloom tomatoes sound great and they look great but they're not going to be as disease resistant I've had the experience of growing different heirloom varieties in the past that didn't really produce to the level that we needed so I'm starting to stick with more uh, uh, flavorful but consistent varieties. So we do use, we grow like sun gold uh, cherry tomatoes and slicers that we grow are big beef which is a, a hybrid variety which is basically just um, different varieties that have been tried to mix cross together to make this variety that's super disease resistant and hardy. I do grow Cherokee purples which is a really well-known heirloom that doesn't always produce a lot but they're so delicious and beautiful I just love them so I grow them 
because I just love them. Do different variety. We try different varieties every year and see what works best. We've gone back and forth on um, different types of uh, radishes. They're really easy to grow. Um, they grow fast, but sometimes they can be super bitter or peppery, and the kids don't really like them. So we've kind of settled on this variety called Easter Egg. Super fast. It's like 28 days from putting the seed in the ground to eating it. They're called Easter Eggs because they have they're they're like white, pink, red. They're really like a variety of colors. And so everybody should have a physical copy of something. If it's not if it's not a big notebook like this, then just like a notebook in your pocket to keep notes in when you're in the garden so that you can remember. If Even if you want to do it on your phone, that's cool too, but I don't like getting my phone out in the garden. It's too messy. I really just love physical stuff. I mean, I still use pencils. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sort of like an iconoclast in a lot of ways. So I really love, just love my notebook. I, I have notebooks from everything I've done, you know, every week for the last several years, 10 years or whatever. So I can go back and, you know, research what I've done on certain dates. But once you've been at this for a while, just basically keep records and then look every year when you start your gardening season, look at what you did. Uh, look at when you planted things the last year. Think about what varieties you used, think about what worked, what didn't work. And just tweak.